The days are evil. The days are what? And your salvation will be a function of your connection to God. Your salvation in evil days is a function of what? Your connection to God. Job 14, 7 to 9 says there is a hope for a tree if it is cut off that though the stem may be dead, if the roots can meet water, it will come again. Don't allow anything break your connection to God. Don't allow anything, nor anyone. No matter what happens. Remember I told you some years ago, about um, seven years ago, I had a vision. In the vision, I said I saw that I was moving up to a hill. There was a very mighty city on top of a hill. In front, like, it was a, a city full of light and glory. Very beautiful. And I was in a car going to the city. It was like a car or a chariot, something like that. And while I was moving... I saw people that were on the on the roadway they were begging for money begging for food begging for things while others were walking and going and even children were claiming while I was going I was in the car so I was giving money to those who were begging I'll give them money some I'll give food it's like I had many things in the car so I was giving it to them at one point the man who was driving this is the first time I saw him I, I didn't he was I didn't see him now he turned and to me when he turned to me I realized he was dressed in white and his hair was his hair was white white like light and his eyes was like you know like lightning was in his eyes you know lightning was shining in his eyes and when he spoke it was like thunder and he said you are not helping them he says but as we keep giving them you are not helping them teach them to walk teach them to walk teach them to walk then I got up from the dream. And I look at something. I said, but wait. In this vision, I saw people that were walking and climbing the mountain and going. Even children. But then the, most of the people who were begging, I recognized they were church members. And I said to myself, so in their in the part of life, my own members are begging. That was, I mean, 2013, I had the vision of 2014. And God's emphasis was to show me that the people are not growing. God has an expectation. By now, this my daughter ought to have known how to forgive. By now, this my son ought to have overcome fornication and adultery. By now, this my child ought to have overcome bitterness and envy. But God is shaking. After five years of being in church, they are still on one spot begging for arms. So it becomes a concern to God. Because God cannot use a weak church to conquer the world. When Jesus was a child, when Herod came, God said, Joseph, take the child and run. Once you, they, listen to me, as long as you keep running in your dreams, it is a sign of spiritual immaturity and childhood. Men don't run in their dream. They confront and win. Every day at the snake camp, I run. Your dream is saying that you are still a child in the spirit. So God cannot trust you to bring you in a battle. He has to make you to be running in every dream. I said, no, no, because I sleep, cross my foot. No, be your foot. You are a child. And when I begin to observe this town, by the grace of God, I came to this town as an answer to the prayers of many people. And I came at a time where, anyway, where there was a lot of things happening. So God had to introduce me into the town to bring something fresh from him. If you check well, there are many young men that have ministries now who are traceable to me. In this town, I have about 20 to 40 sons that have churches in, in this town who are submissive to me. Some who were not pastors, they came here, they were made by God and they are where they are. Now, the point is this. So, I came that time, began doing things in town. But after a while, I realized something. In, in this city, believers don't grow. They only move from church to church. Somebody you will see testifying here today. Watch another channel tomorrow. You will see the same person testifying there tomorrow. So, if I should measure the weight of my ministry by the testimonies that we receive here, it's a wrong measurement. 
I must measure the weight of my ministry by the transformation of men into the image of Christ. That this young man came here, he was a smoker. He no longer smokes. I am succeeding. So you look at this town, there is, it's not church, it's ministry. Ministry is where God reaches out to men to meet their needs. Church is where God transforms men into the image of Christ. So somebody has been in what they call church for 10 years, he still lie, still steal, still fornicate, something's wrong. After 10 years, they are not growing. Why? Because in this city, there was a, a deception brought by the devil and it makes every man to put his emphasis on church became, don't get me wrong, in bracket, solution center. So those sitting in the quarter, some prophet, they prophet Kevin, that prophet Kevin, that boy, the professor, they will not come. As long as they keep coming like that, they will never stay. It is time for us to begin to pray for a fresh hunger of God to come on this town. That people should be, because uh, and look church fine, look man the face, go look some channel, I tell you, you go see that face for them. You go just look at one more. You say, nobody step in there. You can again. They just disappear. Don't know where they left. They are somewhere else. They also disappear there. There's an anointing to disappear. They disappear in unction. So they can't be stable. So you look at people. They are not bearing the fruits of Christ. And because of that, revival is starting. So we still have the, the, the generation of the mighty one man. So listen to me. There is no pride, no glory in being a prophet Kevin. There is only glory when we are thousands of prophet Kevins. Imagine there were 700 of you in this church like me. Eh? <laughs> Satan will be in trouble. So, you now see, some ministries are now built in a way that creates, that makes members to depend on the pastor or on the things the pastor will produce. For example, now, when, when it's all about ministry, when people are sick, they think, or they, are, they need something, they think about coming to the pastor for prayer or getting anointing water, anointing oil. But when we start showing them church, teaching them who they are, they know how to handle problems by themselves. But now, given that many pastors, they themselves were not disciples, how would they make disciples? If somebody can say, God spoke to me, I'm going to open church. You, you hear what he's teaching, you don't understand. This man knows God himself. No, because we have mistaken the ability to prophesy and to do miracles as a sign for spiritual maturity. And the mistake you most of you make, you are so you are you easily put your life to the hands of any man. Easily. Somebody can just come and say. I'm seeing, see, ah, will you see? I bet look me, tell me. You don't know if he's even a demon. You don't care. He's, listen to me. Anytime I talk like this, I'm speaking by the voice of heaven. It is time for us to know God. Please. You came to church to know God and become like God. Make it your focus. Anywhere you see an increase in the ministry of false prophets, it is caused by Christians that are after the things of the flesh. If you were not that eager, listen to me, it is the, the analogy of Christians that give credit to the ministry of false prophets. It's, it is you. If it's not you, they will not have ministry. But because you are the customer, the market must continue selling. You keep seeing things which are against the Bible. You, 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 don't, you cannot take a stand. No pastor is above the scripture. You are seeing things. This thing is not scriptural. This is not how it should be done. But as long as your needs are met, your eyes are blinded. Be, be careful not to wake up in hell. So God is speaking to me. He said, let the people know me. Not me, oh, Kevin. Him, God. Listen to me. When it comes, when I'm talking here, I don't speak as a child. No matter how you will do, you will never talk about church history of the kingdom of God in Kumba. I don't put my name. 
is impossible. It's never possible. In the short time that God, that I came in, so much had been done. And much more will be done. So when I'm talking, you say, hey, he's talking like who? I'm talking like Prophet Kevin. That's what I'm talking as. You cannot deny that my arrival was a trumpet from heaven that sounded revival. You will not deny it. Don't, in those days, 2010, people came for counseling at 3 o'clock in the night. I don't think you have seen it anywhere. 3 a.m. People come to church in this town. You come at 3 a.m., the church is full. And people take numbers. 3 a.m., they will come and stand there. We didn't have specific church day. Church could be any day. Sometimes you come into church, you see about 300 people, you say, okay, let us have a service. There was no day of church. Oh. Yes, we had Friday, but you just come on Tuesday, you see 500 people, let us have service, put microphone on. That was revival. There are thousands of ministries around the world today, all over Europe, America. All of those students attended that, those services. Thousands. It was a revival time. There are people calling from America, everywhere around the world, sir, I, I attended a service, I caught the fire. That fire was distributed. But now, I am beginning to watch that there is a problem. Because whenever you bring something, you must be careful that it goes the way God wants it to go. There is beginning to be too much of an emphasis on men and not on God. So it becomes dangerous. I was praying this morning and I was talking something with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I have come to realize that the greatest gift you can give a pastor is people who can stand with him. And God said, yes, but sometimes I will make men turn against my servants so my servants can turn unto me. The truth is this. You can't be following God for this long and you still cannot forgive. Something is wrong. You can't follow God for this long. I've told you this thing. We can't be preaching fornication every day. This message is not for us. That is class one. Every day, don't fornicate. Don't fornicate. After five years, don't fornicate. That's not what we should be talking here. We should be talking deeper things in the spirit. But we are still caught away. Don't fornicate. Don't lie. Listen to me. There are things I want to preach. But I can't preach them because you don't want to grow. God wants to commit nations into your heart. Was he talking don't fornicate? If you cannot control your body, is it the country you will control? You can't control your body. You can't control your heart. Anything you're angry, you're angry. Can God give you a company of 20 billion? You know, go vex, carry matches, burn them. I, I don't vex, I don't vex, I don't vex, I don't You are still emotional. There are things that God will not, listen to me. When you trust God, he blesses you. When God can trust you, he makes you a blessing. So please, about, you know, sometimes eh, God will tell me, don't prophesy for this month. I say, why? He said, because I want the hearts of the people to be focused on the word as revealed in the scripture. So I come to church and I'm seeing things. He says, be quiet. Pray about it. Don't say it. It's to bring you up. So that the day you come to church, there is no prophecy. You don't say, ah, don't no prophesy today. You will know that there is something stronger in every service, which is the teaching. Please, become serious with God. Your family needs you to be committed to God. There is too much evil. There is evil. There is wickedness is everywhere. Darkness is everywhere. But if you can stand for God, you put your leg and you see these things will not enter your family. Don't put one leg here, one leg out. No, it's time to stand for God with all your heart. As Esther said, I perish, I perish. But they that stand for God can never perish. We are not fully committed to God. Our heart is not committed. Our resources are not committed. Constantly getting angry, constantly getting offended. These things have to stop. Listen to me. I truly want for you is that you should become what you were born to be and to do. That is my joy. 